Right, so today we're doing a 1JZ GTE VVTi into an IS200, but in this case using a Link Altezza plug-in ECU. So, let's get into it. <laughs> Right, so as discussed, this is a 1JZ GTE VVTi in an IS200, but using a Link Altezza ECU. So a little bit of background, uh, you'll notice that the harness is, it's an older harness that we did a few years ago, and the customer wants to now upgrade to a standalone ECU. In this case, we've opted to use an Altezza plug and play because he had a JZS171 um, ECU, standard ECU, what he was running originally, okay. so. As it's an older harness, I'm not gonna focus on going through all the harness sections. Uh, the customer obviously has taken it, put it on and taken it off the engine, so he knows obviously where everything is going. Um, it's one of our older harnesses, we still use the braid, but everything is labeled, um, and he'll know exactly where everything goes. What I am gonna focus on today is what the changes that we've made, so the customer is aware of those particular changes, and so that he can um, put everything properly in regards to that. So, adaptions we've made to the harness. Obviously, on the in ECU box, we've adapted the actual pinout, um, obviously to work with the Altezza plug-in. So that now is in his old case and that plugs in there. All the standard plugs plug in as they were per usual. All the standard body plugs plug in as per usual and the two IS200 plugs will plug in as per usual. So there's no change there whatsoever. In terms of the engine harness itself, we haven't made a lot of changes obviously. A lot of it goes straight to the Altezza plug and play. It's not super complicated. But what we have done in this case is we have actually removed the mass airflow sensor. So in this particular case, what we've done is we've removed the air mass airflow sensor, we've fitted a two pin DTM plugger on the other end, we're supplying the customer with a Bosch fast response intake air temperature sensor with an aluminum mount so he can mount it into his intake tubing. So as you're fully aware, on the standard 1JZ, the mass airflow sensor was on the intake pipe, which is here at the front. So what we've done is we've given him enough length that he can bring it over the engine and mount it into the intake just before it goes into the throttle body. Okay, so he can measure the actual air that's going into the throttle body rather than the air that's going into the turbo. Okay, so that makes that setup all work as it should do. So that's one of the changes done there. Everything else is pretty much exactly the same. Nothing has changed in that regard. In terms of the map sensor, as it's a plug and play, the map sensor is built in to the board. So obviously the customer, Ryan, you're gonna have to fit a pipe out the ECU box along here and into your inlet manifold so the ECU can use the map, map sensor. Okay, so your map sensor is now completely gone. We've replaced that with just an IAT sensor and you're gonna use the map sensor that is inside the ECU box itself. Okay, so those are the changes that are done. Everything else is exactly the same. So again, it'll just go back exactly the way you put it in. Okay, nice and easy. Right, so in terms of testing today, obviously we used to have the standard ECU. Now we've got the Altezza Link and the Altezza Link has the ability to run pretty much all the IS200 cluster. So we're gonna be super happy with that. So in terms of testing, we're gonna be looking at things like with just the ignition on, we're gonna do the ambient temp, the charge light. I'm gonna explain about the oil pressure light. Check engine light, we're gonna test the injectors on the laptop through the ECU, as well as the coils. We're gonna look at the reverse, which I think in this case, we did actually put a two pin DTM plug on because there was a bit of a bit of a mess on the reverse light over there. So that has been neatened up now. And then we're gonna test the speedo, all right? Once you've done all that, then we're gonna actually fire the engine up and then we're gonna make sure that things like the starter circuit still work. Now remember, this is an existing tested harness, so again, everything should work as it is, but we do still start the engine up and make sure that everything works now with the Altezza ECU. Fuel pump, well, that's gonna be tested, obviously, when we start it, it'll carry on working. Taco, we're gonna be looking at the clock, so making sure our taco signal is coming through as we expect. Same with coolant temp, that should come through there just fine. And then we're gonna do the drive-by-wire test. So remember the JZS171 is a drive-by-wire motor even though it does have a cable in. So we've got the 2JZ here that's got exactly the same type of throttle as a JZX110 or JZS171. So we're using that to test it out. So if you see these red wires, it's just because the lengths of the harness don't meet the connectors for the 2JZ. So we've just lengthened everything so we can get everything to work, okay. 
Right, so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna jump into the testing over there, which is mainly with just the ignition on so we can see all of those things that we're looking at over there. So I'm gonna go around now, stick the keys in there, we'll go and we'll look at the ambient temp to make sure that works, and then we'll come back around and we'll start looking at the clocks themselves. Okay, so, again, plug and play. So key in the ignition barrel, turn the ignition on. Okay, and as you can see there, we've got 18 degrees on the ambient temp sensor so we know that's being picked up by the Alteza link and that is transmitting absolutely fine right so coming back around here now we're going to look at the charge light so as you'll see in the bottom corner there you'll see that the battery light is on as well as the check engine light so that is all good now just a little a little niche thing about the Alteza link is obviously it was designed for the RS200 Alteza now what's the difference between that and an IS200 in terms of instrumentation? That had an oil pressure gauge rather than just a light. Right, so what have we done in this case? What we've done is we've taken the oil pressure switch to the ECU and put it on a digital input. Now obviously the MPX translation device that's built into the Alteza link, so it's sort of similar to the, the white boxes that we do. The only problem is because it was designed for an Alteza, it doesn't output an oil light. So unfortunately you won't get an oil light on the dash, but what we have done for you guys is we have put that to a digital input. So you will see if I go over to here that you have oil pressure switch right there. And what we've done in terms of engine protection Effectively, if the oil light comes on, the engine will kill itself almost immediately. So I will show you that as part of the demonstration when it's running. Just thought I'd give you guys an explanation of that. So it's just something to bear in mind with the Alteza link. Unfortunately, you do not get an oil light on your dash. Everything else works, but just the oil light. So we are putting that safety feature in. So if the oil pressure ever dropped and the switch was to turn on, it would kill the engine almost immediately. And I will demonstrate that to you. Now, the thing is, with the MPX systems, unfortunately, you would think maybe, oh, well, we can just fit another MPX device just to translate oil. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that because it is can. If you put two MPX devices, so if we had to put our device as well as the Alteza link on the same circuit, what would happen is those signals would interfere with each other. Okay, And then you're going to end up with all sorts of things like temperature gauges shooting up and down, oil lights, uh, alternator lights going off and on and off and on and off and on as it's communicating and switching between the two devices. Okay, So that's the reason we can't fit those two devices. So just bear that in mind. And that also goes for you guys that want to use the MPX device. You can't use the MPX device and an existing IS200 ECU, otherwise they're going to clash with each other and you're going to get all types of weird things going on in terms of that okay right so that's the oil light sorted out check engine light we've done so what i'm going to do now is we are going to go and test the injectors one by one okay so in the link it's really super easy you can just go over to your fuel tab over here you can go to your fuel setup so i'm just going to bring that up over here and you can go to injector test and now I can test each injector one by one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the front here. So we've got injector one. And that's off. Skip over to injector two. Okay. And that's off. I'm gonna bring it in the middle here. Unfortunately three and four are gonna be obviously close together. So three. And then we're going to have four. Sorry, that's one back on again. Now let's move over to five and six. Now I don't know how, you, how you're going to pick up the spatial sound, but obviously I can hear it's coming from all different locations. Okay, so that's five and then off. And then we're going to go over to six. And that's the last one on there. Fantastic. Okay, all the injectors are working as we expect to. So next up, when you want to test the ignition, in this case, obviously we're using the standard JZ setup. So we've got the igniter, we're using the dumb coils, the three coils that run a wasted spark system. So in our case, we're going to go to ignition. We're going to go down here to ignition test. And we are going to test ignition one. So that's going to fire cylinder one at the front here. Again, I hope 
I'm hoping you guys can hear it over the buzz of the throttle, but I can hear all the coils going off. And we're gonna go number two, which is gonna be two and five. So I'm gonna to go to the back here. Okay, that one's very soft. And I'm right by the throttle, so hopefully you're gonna hear that. And then lastly, number three is gonna put me in the middle, so I don't think we're gonna be able to hear a lot of that. But there you go. Fantastic, okay. So those are all the injectors and coils working exactly as they should. So let's move over to the reverse and the speedo. So again, like I said, it is an old tested harness, but we wanna make 100% sure, especially seeing as though we've added that plug on there, that everything is working. So I'm just gonna bridge this plug and you're gonna hear the familiar IS200 beeping when you are in reverse. So I've just bridged that plug over there. And as I take it off, the beeping goes away. So we know the whole reverse circuit is working exactly as it should. Now you're going to do our usual speed sensor test. So again, we've got the plug. We know there's 12 volts in ground. So one is 12 volts, two is ground, three is signal in. So what I am going to do now is I'm going to put the device into test mode. So it'll output a signal for us. Okay, and I'm going to bridge the yellow wire. And as I do that, so you can see I'm just feeding a signal into the plug and you can see our speed is working 100%. Another take it out. There you go. Right, so now that's done. I will disconnect all of that. Right, so that's all the tests that we're gonna do with the ignition on. What we're gonna do now is we are actually gonna fire the engine up. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the fuel pump because I ran the system dry to test the injectors. So bear with me a second. Righty ho. Right, so as it's a link, I'll tell as the link ECU, it will actually prime the fuel pump, unlike a standard Toyota. So I'm just gonna turn the ignition off, turn it back on again, and voila, now we have fuel pressure over there. Okay, so before I start, I'll just do a quick recap of what we're gonna actually test. First of all, the starter circuit, nice and simple. We're gonna turn the key and make sure that it starts. Fuel pump, well, we've already heard the fuel pump run and we've heard a prime, so we know the ECU is controlling it exactly as we expect it to. We're gonna look at the clocks for the taco signal and make sure that's coming through. You can already actually see the coolant temp sensor. The coolant temp gauge has already risen off the needle there, so we know that that works just fine. And then we're gonna rev the engine for the drive-by-wire test. And the last little one that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly show you guys that obviously when the oil pressure light goes on, engine kills itself straight away. Okay, so. Let's do this. So what we're going to do is come to the vehicle and we're going to start it in three, two, one. Right, so we know the starter circuit works just fine. We know the fuel pump is working because it carries on running. See, we've got a taco signal there. Okay, so the taco signal is coming through. See the coolant temps already rising up there. So exactly as I said, obviously because we cannot get the oil light to the dash via an actual oil light coming on the dash, that is the safety that we've put in. So if the oil light does come on, then obviously the system will shut the engine down immediately, okay? Now, you can choose how long the oil light has to come on before it shuts down. So obviously that could take some fine tuning, um, Ryan, when you get it, if so on. It depends, I suppose, if you're going on a track day and the oil is gonna be sloshing around, but in all honesty, this oil pressure switch is so low that if the oil pressure got that low, I'd probably want it to cut off anyway, okay? So 
just bear that in mind. Otherwise, everything else is gonna work exactly as you expect it to. You can see you've got the ambient temperature, so that's gonna work as normal. Your check engine light, your battery light, your coolant temp, uh, all of that works exactly as it should do, okay? All right, so yeah, this is obviously a viable option for you guys. If you do wanna go that route, it is a service that we can offer. If you are running either a JZX110, JZS171, or to be really honest with you, even if it's a JZX100, I know obviously that lacks drive by wire, etc. but again, perfectly able to repin those existing IS200 plug and play harnesses to work with an Alteza Link ECU, okay? So again, it is something we'll be offering from now on. So if you guys who have existing harnesses on standard management, you do want to upgrade, perfect solution for you guys. Nice and easy. Uh, obviously, if you have a JZX100, we have to try and source you a box to obviously work with the ECU because these Alteza plug and plays don't come with a box. You are required to have a box to put it in, okay? That's the only caveat if you've got a JZX100. Right, um, oh, and to mention that, I, su I suppose the other one is obviously uh, GS300 2JZ GE VVTi. It shares exactly the same uh, type of plug uh, on the actual ECU header itself. So again, that is another one we could do for you guys as well. So if you already have uh, a, a GS300 plug and play into an IF and harness and you do want to upgrade to a link, this is a perfectly viable option for you. All right. Okay, so bit of a short one today, I know, because obviously the harness has already been done before. It's not, a, it's not a style we build anymore. So obviously there's no point in me going through everything. They're all different now. Um, it wouldn't make sense uh, to go through it because it's an old style we don't build. But anyway, hopefully you guys did enjoy that. Um, hopefully maybe you guys get some useful information out about it if you want to use an Alteza link to power whatever engine you have in your IS200. It is a viable option, but with the one caveat, obviously with the oil light. So you do need to remember that, but it's perfectly acceptable to do exactly what we've done here. Add the safety in, take your oil pressure switch to there, or you could actually replace the oil pressure switch with an oil pressure sensor. And then if you wanted to further down the line, you could then fit a separate dash, maybe in where the navigation goes and you could have all of the data. Because bearing in mind, this is obviously just, we're just replacing the ECU. So the customer could add on later, uh, you know, a, a wideband uh, CAN Lambda wideband if you wanted to. He could add in a CAN dash if you wanted to later on. But for now, we're just replacing the ECU so he can get his engine up and running on an aftermarket ECU. All right, so a lot of information I do appreciate, but if you guys do have any questions, please feel free to ask down below, or you can reach us at on our Facebook page at Phoenix Engine Management. And Ryan, let's get this all boxed up and get it off to you. And everybody else, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.